Yay! Yay. <laughs> I was ready. Type, 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 type. <laughs> Yay! Ready for the show. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 200, 272. Every Were you week. Did you say 260 something? I was. Every, for some reason, every week, I'm like, wait, what number is it? Uh, seconds before the words come out of my mouth. And now I'm like, wait, what? 272. I mean, you keep going in and editing it. So you just say the same number every week just to see if you ever Terrifying. notice. Terrifying. I will never notice. <laughs> Literally, every week will be episode number 140 every week. Hi. Welcome to Ginger Runner Live. Very excited about tonight's show. A lot happened this weekend in running, ultra running, uh, adventure racing, everything. Uh, Leadville was this weekend. Big congratulations to Magda um, and Ryan Smith, I believe it was, and Squamish. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about Squamish tonight because, one, both Kim and I have a very close connection to this race. Uh, I ran the 50-50 a few years back, a uh, fun little film about that, and it just continues to draw big names from across the globe and runners who really want to push themselves and test themselves on technical mountain terrain, and there's this what do I got? Gus Just hair? Just grooming you. Yeah, I probably got Gus hair. <laughs> I was scratching him earlier. Um, but there's this one event there, the 50-50, where you run the 50 mile on Saturday and the 50K on Sunday. That is, It's just bonkers. It's like, why would you ever do this? Uh, it's a fantastic event put on by a good friend, Gary Robinson. Tonight, we have the champion of the 50-50. She won the 50-50 the outright. The whole thing. The whole thing. And in the process, set a brand new course record about 40 minutes faster than the previous woman's record uh, held by Caitlin Gerben, who we've had on the show a number of times. Um, Jenny Quilty will be joining us on the show tonight. I'm very excited about that. So sit back, relax, everyone. Welcome to Ginger Runner Live. Uh, show begins <laughs> now. Yay! Yay! We did it. We did it. We got through the opening credits. All <laughs> well and good. Very excited about that. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 272. I'm your host, Ethan. Hi, Ethan. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am your yeah. wonderful co-host, Kim Tashima Newberry, and also the person who happens to man the chat room. Mm -hmm. There are a ton of you in the chat room already that actually were at, at Squamish. Squamish. Racing Squamish, supporting Squamish, just tearing shit up. So. Yeah. Uh, you bring up Squamish. That is going to be our topic of conversation tonight because we are going to be joined by the champion of the 50-50, the Squamish 50-50 2019. Not only champion, uh, she was the first to finish the 50-50 outright overall, overall winner, uh, but also set a new course record in the process by about 40 minutes. Jenny Quilty will be joining us on the show tonight, and we'll introduce her in just a second. But uh, right off the bat, that performance is crazy fast the course is very technical it has a lot of climbing uh what's going on it's <laughs> no can myself you, yeah now. <laughs> can you mean to groom you um it's just it's a really really tough brutal course and this year there's a lot of really fun racing to follow from afar and uh our guest tonight put on a show put on a show for everyone uh, i want to say show but i also want to say like what is it where they like a school like a course clinic, a clinic. it's clinic it's clinic she put on a clinic. <laughs> like a school, like a course, <laughs> like a lecture. What is this? Like, what is, like a lecture where someone is for a uh, clinic. That's it. So our guest tonight, Jenny Quilty, is going to talk to us all about what it's like to train for this type of event, the dual day, uh, how to recover in between, uh, what she did this year compared to years previous, because she has ran the 50-50 before amongst many other ultras. She's got quite the resume, um, but it's going to be exciting to, to talk to her about all of that tonight. And talking to those in our viewing audience who were also at Squamish. Because yes. as Kim said, we have a huge GR crew community. And mm -hmm. it was pretty astounding to see just how many of the crew traveled to Squamish to either participate or volunteer in the events this last weekend. It was really neat. Yeah, we have. I'll just like call out a few that I see in the chat room right now. I know Rebecca and Joshua are there volunteering. Miranda Jacobson uh, attempted the 50-50 this year. Uh, Wing Taylor, of course, is a volunteer there as well. Yeah. Um, Crispin Flowerday, who actually ran with Jenny or very in very near Close proximity sight clinic. of Jenny for a while. Uh, and Crispin actually placed, I believe, second male. Second male, 50 -50. third overall. Yeah. 
So congrats. To, and Stephanie Tatum uh, snagged her third 50-50 hat this year. And she's one of the very few humans to have three finishes I think of she, the 50-50. Stephanie was, I, I, for some reason, it had in my mind that she was one of the first women. Uh, she said that she's now one of four women wow. who have three hats. So That's amazing. And that's just, that's only a few of you guys. I know there are many, many more of you and we'll, we'll. Talk a little bit about that a little bit later on as well. Yeah. So jump into the chat room. Kim will be in there pulling questions and stuff during our live show. If you race this weekend, it doesn't have to be a Squamish, but anywhere. We know that there was a lot of races going on this weekend. It was really fun to kind of follow uh, things going around North America. And there's some races, international and stuff like that. Just let us know in the chat room and maybe we can give you a shout out at some point during tonight's show. Before we introduce our guest. We have some individuals that we like to thank at the top of every show, and those are our Patreon supporters. It is because of them that we are able to do this live show every single Monday, uh, reviews, films, all of the stuff that we do on this YouTube channel is because of them. So a big shout out to all of our Patreon crew. We're going to have an after show tonight with our Patreon crew, and that's for all levels, a dollar on up. Um, but we do have three individuals that we would like to thank in particular. Chris Lee over in Hong Kong. There's a lot going on in Hong Kong right now. Mm. And Chris is still updating like the Trailblazer Facebook and stuff like it. He's just an, an outstanding human. But Chris has been a longtime supporter, has an organization called Trailblazer that showcases the trails in Hong Kong, these beautiful, beautiful trails and the races that go on there. Uh, so big shout out to Chris and his support. Rick Bjarnison and his team at CheekyMonkeyMedia.ca. They're a uh, British Columbia based web design company. They do all sorts of web designs for big companies, small companies, big clients, small clients such as myself. Yes. They redid the gingerrunner.com website. You can go check that out. They do great work. And Rick himself ran the Sinister Seven, another big bad Canadian ultra uh, crushed that earlier this summer. So shout out to Rick. And finally, Brian Sands, longtime supporter and friend and just badass inspiring athlete who has lost more than 100 pounds in his journey, ran his first marathon uh, about a year and a maybe two years ago Almost now. Almost two years. Almost two years ago now. Um, ran his first 50K. And then this last weekend also attempted uh, Squamish 50K. And due to knee, he got a pretty bum knee about ha halfway through. He managed to get to mile... He got to 27? mile 27 on the oh. 50K course. Didn't give up. Did not give up. Got timed, um, out. got timed out. Like fought the good fight. Yes. It like it wasn't. It basically was to the point where he said he's like, I can't. I couldn't move. Yeah. He could barely move forward. Unfortunately, that just led to his, uh, timing issues. But well, he did not give we're up. We're so proud of him. Though. So proud yeah. of Brian. And he's just in a continually inspiring human. So those three individuals, thank you so much for the continued support. Um, let's get into this thing. Our guest tonight just crushed it. Uh, that's the best way to describe it. I think we've talked a bit about her. I think it's just time to bring her on. She put on a on. lecture. She put on she, a show. She, she put on a lecture. She taught us all what it's like to run fast. <laughs> she's badass. And it's about time we get her on the show because she's been on, she's been doing some damage yes. for a long time here on the race circuit. What? Taking names? Sure. Clinics. Big clinics. She's been leading clinics for quite some time. <laughs> professor, <laughs> she's not a professor. Maybe she, I don't know. She might be. <laughs> no, she's, no. <laughs> Jenny Quilty. Yay! Yay! Hi. How are you? I'm sorry good. about our hijinks first and I foremost. I am good. Thank you so much for that intro. <laughs> I am not a professor, <laughs> but I'll take it. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, we've been doing the show for 271 episodes mm -hmm. now, so we get a little goofy. And I think tonight's <laughs> one of the goofier episodes up to this point. I apologize. That's perfect. <laughs> Uh, so when we talked a little bit just before the show started, I, I try not to get too much into the pre-interview of like, tell me all about everything. Uh, I like to save that for the show to kind of find out things in real time, I like to have that conversation on air. Uh, but the first thing I like to ask people is like, oh my gosh, like, how are you feeling? You just ran uh, a crazy amount of distance and mileage and technical terrain. So Jenny, you told me this before the show, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. I feel silly saying it now. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm walking normally. Um, <laughs> I I don't know why or how, so that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, it's like yeah. uh, I mean, maybe that's a testament to the training, and to we can start to dig into that in a little bit here. But I love I love hearing that. So I asked, knowing how I felt after the fifty fifty and how you know, all the reports that we're hearing from people who ran this weekend, you know, it was a really brutal race. It always is. Um, but to hear that you are able to kind of walk around and everything feels pretty good, what do you contribute that to? What do you think uh, at this point maybe led to you being able to move on the Monday following a 50 <laughs> mile and a 50K? 
Um, I think probably, yeah, my training, I think that definitely has something to do with it. And the fact that where I live, I get to run a lot of the technical terrain that looks a lot like Squamish. Uh, I also was fortunate to spend a lot of my time this summer. Um, I took a full week off of um, vacation from work and I trained in Squamish. So I think just having that time on course and that kind of exposure to that terrain has really helped with how my body feels today. Um, I do have blisters. Like I'm not doing, I mean, I just feel like I can't complain if that's what I come out of it with. (laughs) (laughs) So like that's there, but yeah, I think uh, feeling good definitely has to come down to training, probably nutrition as well. I had really good, uh, a really good stomach throughout the two days. And so was able to fuel throughout and then eat again after. Yeah. Nice. I know that we'll probably, yeah, like I said, we'll we'll dig into some more of the specifics about this weekend's event, but mm-hmm. I kind of want to set the stage with who Jenny Quilty is, and you've been running ultras now for some time. What sort of brought you into the trail running space, the ultra space, and has it always been a passion, uh, a hobby? Uh, where is it in, in your life? Uh, that's, yeah, great uh, question. So I started with ultras back after I finished um, my master's at school. I kind of finished school and um, came out of it being like, well, that's what I've worked towards now for six years. So what do I do next? Right. What's another goal and something that I don't know if I'm going to be able to do or not. Uh, I think that's a really big draw for me for ultras. You never know what's going to happen on any given day, even if you've done the distance. So yes, I started with ultras. Um, and I actually started with trail running when I lived in Edmonton and I started with five peaks, um, a series up here in Canada, that's pretty well known, especially for introducing people to the trails. Uh, and when I started with them, I, I, you know, I laughed with the race director, Selena, being like, why would I ever run farther than 6K? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can go and hit the trails and I'm done a little while later and I feel great. And, and yeah, once I finished school, I think I just had that time for it. And I've always had an athletic background. So um, I was used to filling my extra time with activity. So I just, I took up trail running kind of more seriously, paid for a 50K and, and got to it. <laughs> it's I feel like that's kind of a familiar story too. I feel like everyone sort of starts with that dip your toe in, do a shorter distance and go, yeah, that's enough. Like, why would I go? It's trail right. running. Like, it's hard. Why would I go farther than 6K or 10K? And then you start to do that and you go, oh, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it, but I like it. Yeah. Um, let's, we have a nice comment here in the chat room. Okay, sure a couple things that. going on in the chat room here. One, okay. people are on to you, Jenny. They hear the dog in the background. <laughs> <laughs> she just came downstairs. She's been upstairs for an hour and I was like, perfect. And then she decided to come downstairs. Her peanut butter's run out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we love dogs on the show yeah, here. People are show. like, we need to see the dog. We need to see the dog. It's really funny. <laughs> and uh, secondly, uh, we have Caitlin Gerben in the chat room. Caitlin says, I just want to give a huge shout out to Jenny on the CR and the overall win. This is such a stout course and her time is bonkers. So Caitlin Gerben was a previous 50-50 women's 50 course record course holder, record holder. Yeah. yeah 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 so big wow. shout out from caitlin and and like i said we've had her on the show before and i think we even had her on after that squamish run uh it, it it was a stout record did you have that in your mind going into this weekend's events i did hmm. um yeah so for i guess we yeah, are going through that a little bit when i signed up for the 50 50 again this year um i did it yeah two years ago previously and I, I just wanted a time-based goal. Um, I honestly didn't think that like much about it in the way that I probably should have. Um, and I think when I actually even looked into it, I, the, the course records, I don't think were as clearly posted on the website. I, that could be wrong. I might have looked in the wrong place. But I, I looked through the list of old finishers and I was like, where's the fastest female time? Let's find out what that is. And I was like, oh, Caitlin Gerben. Like, I, I know that name, but okay, this was a couple of years ago. <laughs> like, you know, she's done amazing things um, since then. And so, yeah, I looked up the record and I knew what it was. I did the time breakdowns. And then really within about the last month, um, she probably, well, she'll know now, but I've stalked her Strava. I went back to find. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found her race, so that was still there uh, on her Strava account. And I, I started to really break it down. Um, I kind of looked at the course record and was like, well, in each of those distances, I've ran that time uh, before on, you know, similar terrain, like with, with um, the Diaz Vista 50 K also hosted by Gary with close mountain mm-hmm. um, and some other ones, some 50 milers where I've hit that time. So I figured with some good training, I could maybe throw it together. <laughs> and that's kind of, yeah, that's, I just kind of picked a time-based goal. I didn't want to be worried about what other people were up to so much. And I wanted to run my own race. Yeah. So that's, 
kind of where it came from, essentially. Interesting. So did you break it down to like really specific splits and, you know, hit, hit this aid station at this time? And did you break it down to that degree? Yourself? Yeah, I did. I did. And I have never done that before. I've never really ran with a time-based goal. I've ran with kind of effort-based goals or certain um, ways I wanted to kind of go through the race, whether it's fueling or mentality or things like that sure. to kind of focus on. Sure. Uh, but this time, yeah, I, I really, truly uh, like picked through her Strava. I knew the slowest pace she moved at on Galactic, <laughs> the big climb. I knew some of the fastest paces on the downhill. I knew what she had kind of ran on the flats. So the road sections on uh, the 50 mile, there's 10 K of flat terrain running in. Right. Um, I knew, I thought kind of how, you know, about how fast I could safely go without blowing up um, on day one. And so I had broken that all down, but still not really knowing like why I thought that was going to be okay or not. <laughs> Uh, so I knew what, yeah, I knew I wanted to hit like Alice Lake within about two hours. And if I hit it between 204 and 209, I'd be on record. Uh, and then I kind of was just going to play it like point by point. As soon as I hit one point, um, I would try and get to the next on time and and go from there. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, there's a comment from Caitlin in the chat room. <laughs> Caitlin says, that's so awesome. Love the stalking. Ha. Huh? Next time, just <laughs> ask me and I'll share the, all the split, all the time splits and also where I made mistakes. <laughs> that would have been smart. <laughs> I, Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> but I, lo- I love also just the empowerment because, you know, Caitlin, we had her on the show after the Wonderland, um, the Infinity Loop. And it's just kind of neat to see this camaraderie amongst so many individuals in the mm-hmm. sport where it's like, just hit me up. I'll give you my splits. You know, I want to see other people do better. And like, I feel like that's the same way with you. It's you were going after this record, but you were also very respectful of, you know, doing it right and and everything like that. I think this is fascinating because I'm always really curious going into an event like this with the idea of I'm going to go after the course record. Knowing maybe you can, maybe it's within, I guess let's, let's start there. How were you able to determine that it was within I, grasp? I had no idea. <laughs> um, I honestly, like, yeah, I really did not know. Um, I, I went through that many times in the months training up of being like, why? Like, you know, as I kind of <laughs> learned even more about Caitlin just through this journey, yeah, I should have reached out. Um, just finally <laughs> creeped from social media as we do. <laughs> and I was like, oh, like, she's a really big deal and she's an amazing runner. So there was obviously, yeah, those moments that come up or those periods in your training with that self doubt or that questioning of what is this goal but I think I also went into this one because it was a big goal and I've yeah I've never really had a time goal like this before that I went in without real fear of failure either I said this is the goal I've done the research I've done the training I've done the prep um, and if it happens it happens and if it doesn't like this goal that I set is uh, I don't think I mentioned this yet, but it's, it's five hours faster than the last time I did Swamish 50 <laughs> 50. I was just looking at your she results and I was yeah. scrolling down. And I was like, all right. So Squamish 2019, 50, 50, 16 hours and 33 seconds. And I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. 2017 Squamish 50, 50, 21 hours, one minute and 46 seconds. Five hours. That is substantial. <laughs> so not yeah. only are you shaving 40 minutes off the course record, you're shaving five hours off your previous 50, that 50 time. That is insane. That's, yeah. that's improvement. <laughs> like, that's what I think is really fascinating here is that it's within grasp. Yeah. I remember when I finished the 50-50 in right around the same time I think you did your first time. It was like 20 hours something. It was, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know would I even be able to hold on for the second day. But when I finished, I remember going, well, I can't go faster than that. Like, there's no way. But then for like to see another human go, yeah, I I can go faster. Yeah. So here's the thing. Now you need to go five hours faster. (laughs) It's possible. Thank you for saying it happen. It's the clinic. I'm learning. That's the clinic. Yeah. That's the end of the clinic. clinic. Now you just have to execute it. It's just it's really cool. It's really cool to see that this is possible. And it just takes a little it just takes the training and that perseverance and stalking the splits and getting (laughs) familiar with it and familiar with your own body and your own performance and your own ability because it can happen. And it just did. And I think this is one of the, this is really neat about this last weekend and this performance in particular. Yeah. When you ran it um, two years ago, were you racing it? No, I was doing it it, again. It was a a new challenge for me. I had never done a multi-day event. So it was a, let's see if I can complete this. I'm running for the hat. 
Uh, I did a lot of things really differently. Uh, I switched my socks at every aid station. I sat down at aid stations. I ate real food. All these, all these things that I've learned kind of since then and over the years that I have changed and modified to be better for my body and and better for times. Um, yeah, that one was just. It, I mean, it's it's hard either way, and I, I totally understand what you're saying, Ethan. Of when you finish it, no matter what your time, you think, yeah, how could I ever go faster? That's right. you don't finish usually thinking that you could have in that type of event. Um, so yeah, it wasn't a goal that obviously came up right away, <laughs> but when I started to look back and think more about it, I was like, well, I could shave off probably at least 45 minutes with just aid station right. manicuring, right? Like right. just that alone. And then plus the training and a whole bunch of other yeah pieces that have come together. So. I, I love it. I think it's fascinating. Um, just knowing that it is possible and being able to go back and analyze just even <clears throat> because I'm able to compare and sort of see like okay, what did I do in, in the year that I did it? Maybe there is 45 minutes that I can shave off with aid station management. Like, yeah, I can just keep my same pairs of shoes on because I think I swapped shoes like three times during the 50 miler. And I, I think I wore socks for part of the 50K or something. <laughs> uh, so let, let's actually talk a little bit. Do you have a question? We have lots of questions. Let's do that but... first. Yeah, because I'm going to start getting into specifics of the two <clears> days. But yes. Uh, we do have Coach David Roach in the chat room. Hey, Coach Roach. <laughs> Uh, David says, question for Jenny. How much did you sleep between races and was your mind racing? Uh, <laughs> he wants the details. Yes. So <laughs> sleep, I know sleep is so important. Uh, I am. Yeah, I'm a, I love sleep. But my sleep in between actually wasn't great. My sleep uh, Friday night was good. I think I got just over six hours. Set three different alarms so that wouldn't keep me up. Everything was prepped. So that night was a good sleep. A little bit less than normal, but fine for a 4 a.m. wake up. Uh, and then between the races, I didn't sleep that well. I was pretty restless. Uh, my mind wasn't racing yet. Uh, I kept, I was able to keep it pretty calm by just having a really chill day after finishing the 50 mile. Kind of went back to the place I was staying at and just kept quiet. Um, took it all in for a bit and just, yeah, just kind of let my mind unwind in that time. And I think I slept for, again, probably about six hours in bed, but I tossed and turned quite a bit. Um, I was just kind of not able to get that comfortable essentially, which again, makes sense after 50 miles on that terrain. Yeah. So yeah, I probably had, about, I'd say about five ish hours of, um, disrupted sleep. Yeah. I was definitely curious about that too. Cause I remember that night being not great. I think there was only a couple hours of sleep when I, when I did it. So what, what drew you to these trails and these races specifically because Squamish is such a it's such a brutal race it's got lots of technical terrain lots of climbs but some flat sections that can really burn you out early on uh, if you go too fast what sort of drew you to this event this event for me it's the community like the Squamish 50 50 event as a whole it's it's just unbelievable I crewed for a friend who did the 50 50 last year and then had yeah, raced it the year before so when it came back to this year I was like I want to be part of it again <laughs> Um, I, yeah, whether it was crewing or volunteering or racing, whatever was going to work for me. And I, yeah, as I registered, well, you know, within probably five minutes of it opening to make sure I got in. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And it, it's just, I mean, I love the terrain. I love technical descents. I love, um, long, steady climbs that are sometimes runnable, um, again, depending on the situation, but I, I love the, the variety on those trails. And I love that every about 10 to 12 K you get to check in with all these awesome people again. You know, the community here yeah, is just so big and so powerful that every aid station, you almost get this whole reset, even if you're there for less than a minute. You know, like grab a pickle, splash some water. Just the vibe um, throughout is is so inspiring. And same with the finish line. When you finish day one, you know what's coming on day two. And there's that excitement alone, I think, can carry people through miles like more than they more than they know. Yeah. I I would like love to know some some of the breakdown for the race itself. So the fifty miler obviously takes a large portion of the day, but there's there's a lot of nuance to this back to back Saturday Sunday that things can go wrong. Whether that's recovery after Saturday's fifty miler, if you don't do that properly, you waking up the next day could be really difficult. Sleep is a big part of it. Uh, gear becomes a part of the equation, whether it's recovery gear or running gear. So for you going into this. What were your must do's, must haves from uh, for Saturday going into Sunday just for your success? So for the transition? Yeah. 
mostly okay yeah so for the to make sure I got everything I needed kind of in between it was definitely um foam rolling <laughs> as we know right making sure that that happened no matter what on uh Saturday and not hanging around the finish line for too too long mm-hmm. um so I hung around for a little bit there and then once um the podiums and stuff were over I, t- I took off pretty quickly uh, and then once I got home, yeah, I foam rolled. I have uh, a rebuild, so a protein drink that I use, and that's my go-to. It tastes like chocolate milk, so no matter how I'm feeling, I want it. Uh, and that's that's the best thing. And then from there, yeah, getting a good meal, which actually I ate a bit less than I thought I would. I, I um, got my uh, boyfriend to get a pizza, and I think I had one piece. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I knew I wanted that pizza, so I had that. Um, I knew kind of some do's and don'ts. So I also very strategically did not eat any fiber for about two days going into this event. Um, so that was a huge, yeah, huge piece as well. I, uh, and then, so making sure the I foam rolled that I ate both my recovery drink and some real food and then really, yeah, with that unwinding piece, I knew I needed to sit, um, just in a space kind of by myself and, and really flush out the day. Um, I, I didn't stretch a ton. I know coach is listening, uh, but I didn't stretch a ton. I just kind of moved how I felt good. I kept moving actually on my feet for a little while, um, tended to the blister I had. On my second toe, I had about um, the size of a blueberry as a blood blister on my toe. I kicked a rock in day one. Uh, it didn't move. So I had to get first aid to help me with that a little bit. So there was some maintenance there. And then once yeah, once I was taking care of, it was kind of just rolling, resting, sitting on the floor and reprepping the gear. So yeah, if you want me to get into specifics, I had a pretty set out plan on my gear and what I would have for each day. Yeah, um, let's actually go into that because I'm I'm mm-hmm. super curious. Let's start with Saturday and then go into yeah. Sunday, just sort of uh, break it down. Sure. So for Saturday, I'm a list person. So I had lists of everything. I had a, um, a big Ziploc for each both each pack in each aid station I didn't do drop bags I just had my crew show up with the Ziploc bags so uh, this is yeah, something I've learned over time but I did pack swaps this year so I mm-hmm. started with one pack it was preloaded with all the gels I would need in order to get to the first aid station on Saturday so about four gels I was taking a gel every 5k which is my kind of normal routine and then uh, my two soft flasks uh, for water and I had those loaded with my electrolyte mix um, so I had that and, he, and pretty much just like a couple other things I had squirrels, nut butter, like to see off any chafing that might start anywhere along the way. Um, and otherwise I kept it pretty light. So I had, yeah, Saturday that pack. And then I had an aid station bag labeled with exactly what was in it, what I needed to take with me so that when my crew was there, they could just basically hand it off. Um, and then once I got to quest, I did the full pack swap. So I had a second pack that was again, all loaded with everything it needed. The electrolytes and everything were already in the water bottle. Um, the gels were where I wanted them. There was another squirrel's nut butter. Like I kind of bought everything in threes leading up to this event. So I chose to kind of invest, I guess, that way to help myself at the aid stations. Sure. Um, yeah, I did a sock swap that I had planned for. And then same thing at Far Side, a little further along the way with about 10K to go, I switched into a lighter pack. And um, again, preloaded with some smaller flasks, a squirrel's nut butter, and my gels for the day. And that that was how I prepped out a Saturday. Um, and that was all prepped Friday night before the race, early evening. And then I had Ziplocs prepared for Sunday. Again, uh, pre-measured out electrolytes for each of the water bottles that I would then refill between Saturday and Sunday. So only have so many soft flasks. Um, and then, so when I got back, that was one of the other things I did Saturday night is I just rinsed everything, swapped everything out, you know, aired out the packs and then refilled it from these Ziploc bags that I had already prepared with lists on the front again of what was in them, where it needed to go, handed off my aid station bags to my crew and, and yeah, I just rolled it kind of into the next day. So it's, I mean, I'm listening to this going, this is very precise. Like this is obviously very smartly done. You had your goal in mind and you executed everything to the T to make that goal come to fruition. And it's a commonality that we see with a lot of FKT attempts and fast races and winning and and all that sort of thing that we see on this show. People that we talk to have a very specific sort of plan. Did you have any problem solving uh, initiatives or, or any sort of thought process into what if something happens? What if I get off my splits? What if I get off nutrition or any of the sort of backup plans? Did you have any of those in place? Uh, And what were they if you were even thinking that far? Yeah, I kind of was and wasn't. Um, 
things I knew things would come up. They just, you know, they always do. So I think it's being open to the fact that something is going to change. I think, you know, there's that saying or quote, I don't know who said it, but like what you worry about isn't what's going to happen. <laughs> so as much as you can plan for everything to be a certain way, knowing that something's probably going to pop up somewhere. Um, and it, and it did, like I had a couple of things that came up throughout the race and, and just mentally kind of preparing for, you know, what is a game changer? What's, what's going to pull you from this goal or maybe what things might you have to work through. So being off the splits definitely came up in my mind because yeah, I went into this not knowing if those splits were really within my reach at all um, on this course, just, just trusting kind of the process and, and going through with a lot of self belief that it could happen and, and trying to stick to that. But I, I figured if, if that didn't happen, I was, you know, ultimately um, still going to take a ton of time off my last, <laughs> my last time out there. Um, and, and then that I could kind of reassess if I needed to, I figured if I came into aid station one with my goal of two hours and I was there at three, well, okay, the day's changed, right? The goals is, the goals probably changed. Um, then am I, am I competing with another runner or am I working for a certain spot or am I just going through this race, um, with a different purpose? And maybe it's that hat. That was ultimately my, my goals went a goal was course record. B goal was maybe chasing for a podium spot. Uh, if that if that happened again, you don't know where anybody else is going to be. Uh, and then C goal or any other goal is get that hat. <laughs> that damn hat. Yeah. Gary designing those hats. Yeah. Is like Being in the, the chat room earlier said thing. what people will do for a hat. What people would yeah. do for a hat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what color were the hats this year? Uh, so the blue is for the first year. Green is for the second. So this year I got my green hat. Mm. Yellow is the third year. And then yeah. from there, I, it's not, I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> I believe black is at one point. Is yeah. black second year? No. no. What did you, no. Blue the first year, green the second year, yellow the third. I think it's black is the fourth year. Because I think mm. there's only a handful of people that have done it each year. Uh, yes. And Gary always celebrates one, them. There's Colin Miller who has done it. I think he was going to be getting a new color of hat this year, but he wasn't able to to be there, unfortunately. So he's the, he's done it the most. So people Got have to it. catch up to him. Yeah, <laughs> Gary's going to run out of colors. Uh, let's get to some of these live questions. Uh, yeah, a question from Snef Stephanie Stephanie Tatum in the chat room, who also ran the fifty fifty this weekend. Stephanie says, "How long did Galactic take you, and do you run it?" That's a great question. I actually am not sure of my overall time. I'd have to open up my Strava. I was giving myself from Corners Aid Station, so since she's been on the course. Well, no, but from corners to the top, um, and in the 50 mile, the second time through, to be very clear, <laughs> I wanted to be roughly an hour. So I was using that both days. Uh, so that's what is it, a six ish, six and a half K section, okay. mm -hmm. I believe with a, with that full, yeah, 800 meters. Um, and I had done that in training. So I kind of knew that. And what I did is I went into it. Um, thank goodness for training on course. I went into it the first time I trained on it thinking I'm going to run this whole hill. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> so, I learned in training that the first 2K have most of the challenging elevation and the second 2K slowly start to ease off. So both days I went into it with the mentality of hike the first 2K. So I was watching that distance roughly on my watch and then waiting for it to feel okay underfoot in spots where you know, there's spots where on a climb even you can look at it and be like, this is visibly flat, so maybe I can jog it. You know, yeah. maybe I can run it. And just doing that each time that it leveled off. I, I knew I didn't want to max out there because there's a massive descent to follow that I wanted to get to have some fun on. So, yeah, so it was about an hour, and it was half and half, essentially, with still with hiking in the second half, though, too. So, like, I have so many memories. Like, even as you're talking about Galactic Shiza, I forget. There's little blips in my brain of – where the trail would straighten out and flatten out and my mind going, you need to run. And then I would start to run and go, you need to stop. Uh, <laughs> like it would just ruin myself. But I remember all these little things just even as you're talking about it. And I remember like um, they had just built, there's really no summit. It kind of levels out and you go down across that bridge. That bridge was built like two weeks before I ran the 50 50 and the dirt hadn't even settled in. You weren't, there was like no trail. You just kind of had to walk on soft bark and stuff. Uh, but I have these really weird memories of that moment. Cause me and another guy were like, is this the trail? I don't know. Should we go up this way? I don't think hmm. that's the trail. Is that the trail? Uh, yeah. Crispin in the chat room says her pacing up a galactic was awesome. We ran together on it yesterday. Absolutely perfect for me. <laughs> Oh, Crispin. Oop, and then was, Jenny yeah. must have dropped Crispin. <laughs> <laughs> not there, not quite yet. Oh, Thanks for the pacing, Crispin. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> so uh, knowing 
what we know now with this event. It's it's two days. You got the fifty and the fifty. Uh, obviously, <laughs> it's called the fifty fifty. You are a professor. I am <laughs> teaching a clinic. Uh, how would you consider this playing out uh, in comparison to a longer distance event? So just kind of hearing if if the dominoes start to fall a certain way early on in a fifty mile, it it seems like there's still ways that you can kind of reel things back in, whereas during uh, a 60, 70, 80 mile or 100 mile event, when the dominoes start to fall, you really have to keep track of the problems because they could rear their e ugly head later on in the in the day. So in this case, you can kind of reel things in for the first day, but then deal with it separately entirely on a second day. Uh, did you find that that was the case? Do you find that it's easier to manage two days versus one long endurance event? What's kind of your take on maybe the benefits versus the downsides to this sort of thing? I think the, the biggest benefit to me is the sleep. Uh, mm. Sleep is a cure all in so many ways, even if it's not a great sleep, right? It's a mental rest. It's a chance to step back and, and reset and be out of that problem solving mode that can kind of come up. Um, I haven't done a hundred miler. So that uh, that's a distance I haven't embarked on yet. Um, but yeah, it's, I think, I think some things are similar with, with longer distances or one day big events um, in the sense, yeah, you do have to manage things as you go, because if you get too far behind, even if it's on nutrition or fueling, that could really be setting the stage for the next day. Same way that if you go out way too fast, right? If you blow up on day one, you are um, sacrificing potentially day two. Uh, and that was something that actually came up for me too, even with, with day one going how it, how it did and going really well. I finished faster than expected, thinking none of this actually matters if tomorrow doesn't happen. Right. So right. there are elements to that where with, you know, a longer distance, like a hundred K or something else, where if you, if you only get halfway and you let certain things slide, you know, if your feet blow up or your, whatever it is, um, if you let it slide for too long, you are sacrificing. And I think that really carries over between the two. You have to be, you have to be thinking enough about the second day, but I think at the same time, you also have to trust yourself enough to, to know, you know, that if, if things aren't going incredibly sideways, you know, if, if injuries aren't popping up or maybe even if things are kind of starting to hurt a bit that don't normally hurt, being able to actually step back and judge that and also not freak out about it, uh, which came up for me yeah, on course a little bit too. Uh, so you kind of deal with things as you go. With, uh, with sorry, with the 50-50, were you, were you finding yourself training? Obviously, you were training specifically on the terrain, on the course itself and train near you that replicates the course. Were you doing something with distance that sort of replicated it? Were you doing long days on Saturdays and an equally long day on Sunday? Were, were you balancing it out in any way like that? Uh, not quite. So, yeah, I'm, I'm coached by David with SWAP. Uh, so that's been amazing guidance through this. And I just I followed his plan. <laughs> uh, and I had back to back. So sometimes uh, yeah, I think a lot of people want to know, right, what did you do? What did it look like? Um, I had back to backs, uh, but overall, I would roughly run up to about 50 K over a weekend um, and usually about 100 K weeks. So that was kind of my average, I would say, while I was building towards this. Um, and and generally, too, I, I was following the you know 80 percent easy, 20 percent um, hard or moderate. And when it's moderate or hard, it, it is. Right. Um, and when it's easy, it's easy. So that's, I think, something that's really key. And and when you can see that with different goals and with different runners, I think it's pretty, it's pretty neat. Maybe that's the clinic side, um, but it, <laughs> it easy, is, easy is easy. And um, I've, I'm not related to this race, but I have led some clinics and a lot of group runs or social runs. So a lot of my weekend runs yeah, are chatting, they're conversational. Um, there's bits sometimes of, of hard work in there, you know, whether it's time-based or some hills or things like that. But um, generally speaking, it was yeah back to backs of a 30k and a 20k. It's pretty common um, for what I've seen, and and yeah, easy with some bits of hard work along the way. I love it. That's great advice, Kim. You you pulled some questions aside. I'm sorry, I keep running over them. Uh, yeah, a great question from Deb in the chat room. Deb says, Jenny, did you hold back on day one to perform better on day two, or are you confident about? Or were you confident your legs would be able to bounce back after? A bounce back for the 50k yeah, for the 50k yeah how much did you put yourself out there on day one <laughs> uh, i would say I, I put myself out there i finished 20 minutes faster than i thought i would um i it kind of shifted like i didn't i didn't want to let anybody running the 50 mile as as their race take me out of my focus it's right. really hard you know to let people go or chase them <laughs> and 
I actually really had no idea what was going on the whole race. So I was just following my paces. It was working out. I was sticking to the times I had set out to hit. So I was just sticking with that. I'd say not really, um, not really over pushing, like I wasn't redlining at any points, but I was working hard on the hills and taking it easy where I needed to go easy and um, having fun on the descents. But again, not going into that huge eccentric mode, right? Not thrashing on the downhills, just right. holding. So holding back a little bit, right? As if, I mean, as if I think I normally would within a 50 mile distance anyways. Uh, and then towards the end of the 50 mile, it wasn't until oh, there's about 15 K left and a volunteer said, Oh, you're in third. And I said, Oh, for the 50, 50, like for females, and he said, no, for women in the 50 mile. And I was like, well, well like, oh, oh. Damn. I actually stopped and looked at him and was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, thank you. And then, I was, okay. So I didn't want to, again, to go, um, veer off my goal. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to push too hard because I did want to save my legs a bit for the second day or just know that it was coming. But I was also really just trusting my body uh, to know that if I felt good and I was moving at that pace and I was gaining on somebody cool, if I caught them awesome, then I would probably work a bit to hold that. Um, which, which happened with about 10 K to go around that last 10 K trying to get out of sight from, um, from the, yeah, the third place 50 mile woman who uh, was there. But otherwise, yeah, I was, I was pushing, but trusting at the same time, I would say it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a mix of both. I went through the whole weekend with my mindset was just believe, like just believe in yourself and your legs and know that this will happen and that you're not, you know, racing it without a plan. You're not just charging forward. You've got this, you've got the structure. So see what happens. <laughs> and also just to remind you guys, not only did Jenny place first overall in the 50, 50, she also podiumed both the 50 miler and the 50 K. Yeah. The, and that's like against people that are only running, running just, that race. just those races. So this is huge. <laughs> I hope Gary just sends you all the checks. Uh, <laughs> Here's a check for everything. Here's a check for all the individual things. Here's a, like 20 different medals. Uh, I'm going to give you all the colors of hats. It's pretty damn awesome. Like it's a pretty, pretty freaking amazing accomplishment. I don't want to downplay this at all. So I'm doing my best to just like it. The 50 50 is a really fucking hard thing. And to win it outright and to set a new course record, a uh, female course record is it's just, it's stellar. It's and a to really stand wonderful on the performance. podiums on both days. On both days. For three things. <laughs> so not only do you have to finish the race and like go back and relax, but in between that period, you have to wait around for Gary to give out the award, like stand on the podium. <laughs> he takes forever when he does it. You know, he does. So Jenny, it's just a, an amazing performance and we're honored to have you on. And it's really cool to sort of follow along. What's next? I mean, you're obviously proving yourself as a damn stout mountain racer. Do you have big goals, big plans, things that you want to do? Um, yeah, it's, honestly, this this race with all the planning I did has been such a focus for me in the last little while uh, that I'm 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 really excited for whatever comes next. And I I don't have a race in mind. Um, I think with yeah, the other time I've been racing now, it's it's a good time to be looking into some of those serious races you know I always said for years I would I would look for a coach when I felt ready to follow a plan and then I would you know do certain distances and races when I felt ready to commit to that and and my relationship with running has just really grown immensely in this last year um, it's it's a huge part of my life it's a huge priority in my life and I want to see where that goes so who knows <laughs> I don't yeah I can't can't give you anything to specifically look out for um, but it's yeah, I'm going to be doing ultras for sure. <laughs> yeah. Would you ever yeah. go back to do the 50 50 again? Or is it like, I left my stamp, I'm good? Uh, yeah, I can't say never. I mean, those those darn hats. <laughs> 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 There's more colors. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I'm not curious right now to go back and, and try to finish with a different course record. Uh, right. But I'm I, yeah, I'm excited for the year away from it. But registration opens, I know in November. So we'll see. <laughs> Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, people in the chat were already like, uh, when do I sign up? When, when do I set the new course record? And David in the chat room also says, Jenny is a life boss. All in caps, by the way. Followed by, Addie is actually the coach and David just eats pizza and goes on podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that. We do all know that. Yeah. Uh, maybe one last question and then we'll get into the quickie question quiz. Uh, yeah, Stuart in the chat room wants to know what your favorite section on the Squamish course is. So this is probably a weird one. I love leaving Quest and I love the climb trail. It goes on for 8K. 
Uh, I can't remember what the <laughs> elevation gain is. Most people maybe don't love that spot. I <laughs> think yeah, everyone everyone like does not spot. love that spot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know if it's going through Quest again, which is a super energetic aid station. Yes. Um, I don't know if that's what it is. If it resets something for me or knowing that you're in that back half of the course, regardless of the day. Sure. Uh, I think it has to do with the grade for me. That's a, that's a steady, good grade. Uh, I like being able to run that climb for the most part. Uh, and there is a mossy rock, which I wish again, I had shared this before. There's a mossy rock near the top. Once you hit that, there's 10 little switchbacks to go. So I like getting to that point and counting it down. Uh, it's a really fun, I think, part to check off of the race. It's kind of the last long climb. So that is actually my favorite part of the course. <laughs> Was there a guy with freezies out there this year? I believe they probably had some at Farside, but I had I had the best crew at Farside. They literally just put their hands on me and said, okay, keep going, bye. <laughs> so I, <don't> know. <laughs> I, don't I remember know. there being a guy with uh, uh, freezies. I think he was from Nestor's Market or something on his own in bet- just, just after Quest on the oh. climb up. Uh, before you get to uh, like the top of Anger Midget and come down Anger Midget and stuff like that. It oh, was, no, he wasn't there. It was life-saving. Like I remember getting to that point and just, can I have six of these? And he's like, uh, <laughs> sure, save some. No, I'm going to eat them. Um, Jenny, a huge congratulations to you on absolutely crushing the course record of the Squamish 50-50 and winning it outright, which is just, just stellar. Um we are so excited to have you on the show tonight. And because this is your first time on the show, we have a little segment that we like to call the Quickie Question Quiz. We do it with all quilty of our... Quilty Question Quiz? The Quilty oh. Question <laughs> Quiz. It is a series of rapid fire questions. Uh, very easy. You just answer with the first answer that comes to your brain. When you are ready, give me a thumbs up and we'll just jump right into it. Here we go. What was your very first race? Uh, first race ever? This is not rapid. <laughs> <First> <laughs> I'm messing this up already. Uh, my first race ever, I don't know. My first trail race was five peaks in Edmonton. I'll give you that one. In 2010. Perfect. Favorite place to run currently? Chilliwack, BC in the River Valley. Road or trails? Trails. Yeah. Bucket list race? Probably Western States. Favorite running movie? Oh. Um, well, let's go with where dreams go to die. <laughs> I oh, agree. Really yeah, yeah, Jenny wins yeah. all of the question, question quizzes. Um, favorite guilty pleasure TV show? Oh, I really like Good Girls right now. I don't know if that's guilty pleasure. It's actually pretty good. So <laughs> I don't watch it, so I don't know. Oh, I'm still waiting should. for someone to top Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, this might do it. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um, uh, favorite pre-race meal? Oh, probably just pasta, as boring as that is. Uh, no vegetables, no fiber. <laughs> Favorite post-race meal? Chocolate and ice cream. And finally, your current running kicks. What are the shoes that you just kicked oh. ass at Squamish 50-50 in? I actually wear the Nike Wild Horse, the new ones, um, all weekend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was gonna, yeah, I was going to say, I saw a picture and I was like, oh, she's wearing the new Wild Horse. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I was, they worked out well, I'm assuming? Yeah, I've actually worn uh, the Nikes for years. I like Since I think one of their first editions, but before they even had the two options. And then switched into the wild horse. Yeah, when I found those. And yeah, it's, they're awesome. They worked for both days. And again, apart from some toe blisters, which I think more so came from kicking rocks. Uh, I did, yeah, they were great. <laughs> well, congratulations. You just passed Thank the you. question Yay. quiz. <laughs> Everybody in the chat room is like, no fiber, no fiber. No fiber. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people are no definitely taking now. that advice. <laughs> that is now a new life lesson. Yeah. Uh, this clinic was brought to you by fiber, <laughs> uh, Metamucil. Um, yeah. Jenny, it's just so great to have you on the show. Uh, remind people where they can find you on social media if they want to follow up. Uh, and also, we'll talk briefly about, uh, we'll talk more about it in the after show, but you are a race director, brand new to it, just like Kim and I were this year. And we're going to talk a little bit in the after show about that. But where can they find that sort of stuff? Let them all know where they can find it. So you can find me. Um, I'm basically just on Instagram. I don't uh, use Twitter or anything. I'm at Adventures of Genthar. So <laughs> And that hasn't come up yet, but my uh, name on there yeah, is Adventures of Jen Thar, and that's J-E-N-T-H-A-R, uh, nickname from the trails. And then um, other than that, yeah, you can find me also at PacificPineRunningCo.com, and that's my uh, company that I have with Katrina Abram, and we do some coaching. We actually host clinics, <laughs> real <laughs> clinics, <laughs> um, and, yeah, and do some adventure and stuff like that in the Fraser Valley as well. And then also, as you mentioned, race directing with the Fraser Valley Trail Races. So Katrina and I both race direct for a new series in the Fraser Valley out here in BC. And um, that's Fraser Valley Trailers is fvtr.ca. 
fantastic. We need to get up there for one of the races. Yes. Yeah, Fraser yeah. Valley is gorgeous. Love it up there. Um, our guest tonight was Jenny uh, Quilty. Just awesome to have her on, setting the new female course record at Squamish 5050, winning it outright uh, in a fantastic 40 minute faster CR, which is just setting that bar super high. She's going to join us in our after show. If you would like to join us in our after show and ask those residual questions, all you got to do is go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a dollar a month. You get to contribute to not only everything that we do here, all of these live shows, podcasts, films, reviews, everything, but you get to interact with our guests week after week and you get to go back and watch the archive after shows and everything like that. It's all there in a nice neat little package. Uh, so consider that if you have not already. Um, we like to end all of our shows with a shout out to a member of the community uh, in a little segment that we like to call our GR crew member of the week. These are individuals who go above and beyond, push their limits, challenge themselves, set their goals and crush them in the process. Um, this week, I think is a very special GR crew. What do we got, babe? So for this week's GR Crew Member of the Week, um, we just want to celebrate all of the GR crew that was up in Squamish, either racing, volunteering, supporting, crewing, whatever you guys were doing up there. It was really fun to see you guys kind of organize the community on your own and come together, have dinners together, drive each other around, uh, do all sorts of things together. So I'm just going to call out people that have added their name to this to, to the running list. So if I miss anyone, I apologize. We have Mary Jo Wiggins, who ran the 23K, Brian Sands, Rodney, and Justin, who all did the 50K. We have Peach, uh, Marianne, Todd, David, all that did the 50 miler. And then the 50 50, we have uh, Josh, Josh Powell, uh, Chris Butcher, Sebastian, Miranda, Crispin, and Stephanie Tatum. And then we also have a number of volunteers that were up there as well Brian and Laurie Sands, Marianne, Rebecca, and Joshua. It was, and that is only some of some you of them. We also had people that won contests, like Ginger Miss last year. The contest winners yes. that got to go and, and run at Squamish this year. Uh, we had lots of other members that were up there, but kept their profile low. Uh, <laughs> but they were also racing and finishing and just doing incredible things. It was really, really. I just want to. I want to highlight for a second how special it is for us to have a viewer, uh, a viewership like this go and participate at an event like that, that is for many people, uh, you know, another country, obviously going to Canada, right. but the community was able to rally themselves, support one another and provide support for each other. We were getting messages throughout the weekend of people driving and picking other members up, taking them to the start line or picking them up at aid stations or, you know, just being there to support in any capacity is such a wonderful thing. And it, it was so enlightening all weekend for Kim and I to see yeah, these updates. Yeah, so fun. Like, this is, how crazy is this that viewers of this show who have just learned about Squamish either through videos or through this show and the, the guests that we interview, much like Jenny tonight, um, and were inspired to go take this event on uh, it, and then support other people in that process. Strangers, for the most part, a lot of them didn't know each other, but now they're great friends yeah. and will maybe pace and crew each other in the future. Like, it's so cool. It is so cool. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the after show tonight. We're also going to do a special GR crew Patreon only show where we get to highlight some of those individuals. Yes. Um, we Kim and I were talking about that today. So that'll wrap up our main show here. Again, a huge thank you to our guest, Jenny Quilty, Jen Thar. Maybe we'll ask that too in the after show where that came from because uh, what a great nickname. Uh, but we are just so, so enthused about everyone here who is uh, watching that maybe was up there this weekend. It's just, again, such a wonderful thing. So thank you everyone for tuning in tonight and giving our guests some love. Uh, any, am I forgetting anything? Uh, GRGR. GR, GR. Ginger Runner Global Run registration is open now. We will be closing it probably at the end of this week or next week. Uh, we're going to wrap up the main t-shirt registration so we can start actually making the t-shirts and stuff like that. If you have not registered, do so now. It's rungrgr.com. It's very simple. Go there, register on October 13th. It's a two-hour run where you get to run wherever you are for two hours. And everyone on earth that is participating gets to do it at the same time. We get to collect videos and photos and uh, we so get awards. Fun. It's so much fun. So yeah. we'd love for you to join our fourth annual GRGR. Just go to rungrgr.com. All right. Thank you, everyone. Get out there, train hard, race harder. And part of the hardest, I know I am. We'll see you guys next week or on the after show. Bye. Goodbye. Ginger Ron.